which number this would be but if I figure it out I will let you know so in this let's talk video we'll be talking about dyeing yarn with the writ dyes and also um, I'll be showing you the crochet and the knitted swatch that I did of the hand dyed yarn that I made so Okay, sorry guys, I'm just looking on my computer because I really want to be accurate and tell you like which specific number of the Let's Talk that we're on. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I have my trusty microphone that I love oh so much and I hope it's catching my voice. Okay, so the last Let's Talk video I did was episode 8, so this is episode 9 of our Let's Talk series and episode 8 was my favorite when I completed my first ever sock so firstly let's talk about the yarn this is the yarn that I dyed I tried to wind it but my ball winder sucks and um, it came out like this so this yarn is one um, super wash 100% well it's not 100% but it is 100% natural fiber which means it is made out of um, wool. It is superwash merino. Um, it said silk and alpaca, baby alpaca. So that's this is a natural fiber. And the dye that I used to dye this is the Rit brand. Oh, got the, the whole entire price on there. Well, it really doesn't matter, but it is Rit dye. Um, and the dye method that I used was, um, they called it Im immersion, yes, immersion dyeing. And that's just like I had a dye pot. I put the yarn in there and I let it do what it do. The specific color that I used is yellow, you guys can see, and petal pink. That's petal pink. Um, the more dye you use, the darker the color, hence why I have these nice orange reddish color. It's actually pretty, pretty beautiful, if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, that was the dye that I used, and I don't know how much of it I used specifically. I wish I had my notebook, I wrote it all down. Well, not how much I used specifically, but anyway I don't know how much dye I use specifically because I literally took this spoon <laughs> I took this plastic spoon and I sprinkled the dye on however I saw fit darker darkened it in some areas lighter in some areas things like that um you done eating <laughs> I gave Brody some triple A chips I don't know why I just I just did. <laughs> and I'm letting him eat them on my bed, which is the world's worst idea. But when you love your children, don't you let them do the craziest things? And he has drooled all over the bed. And get that chip, good boy. Okay, you relax, buddy. You relax. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to talk about the dyeing process a little bit before I went into like how the yarn took to the dye and, and the specifics like that. So the dyeing process was fairly easy. How I dyed it was I soaked my yarn in one cup of vinegar and I did two cups of water. I soaked my yarn for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I'm not too sure if the longer you soak it has any effect on it but that's just what I did and then I heated up one cup of vinegar and two cups of water in a pot and put it on the stove and I heated it up and then once I un, um, was ready to dye my yarn I squeezed out as much water as I could and I inserted it into my pot if it's in the hank I twisted it like this so that it was in a, a circle and I laid it in my pot like that and I took my two dies I separate I emptied them into these two ramekin things these two containers and I literally um, on one side I did the yellow 
and I sprinkled it and then I pushed it down a little bit push the uh, the yarn down so that the dye could get into the water and then I on the other side I did the petal pink so this dye specifically says that it will dye um, a hundred it's not recommended for polyester or acrylic so you know non natural fibers um, but it works best with where did it say that oh um, it works good on cotton um, and it works good on it actually said that it was good with wool and silk which is what was in my yarn blend oh here it is um, double the amount of dye for bright colors or dark colors add one cup of salt for cotton and one cup of vinegar for nylon silk and wool which is what I had so this basically I I know that I needed the acid in order for the wool to take to the dot the yeah the dye or the wool to take to the dye whatever the case may be so I overall I used two cups of vinegar and honestly um, it worked pretty well you as you can see I have pretty vibrant colors a lot of yellow and orange and red and there's a little bit of pink in there um, so that was basically the process and I let that sit for a whole of uh, 40 minutes in the dye bath it was in there for 40 minutes and then when I went to take it out there still was a little bit of color left in there but one thing that you should do is when you take it out always let it dry completely not dry but like cool down I didn't cool down I went directly from hot water to washing it in cold water which it bled a lot a lot of the color bled out um, it became lighter it was really really dark when I took it out and it kept I had to wash it multiple times um, and then I looked up online how to keep it from bleeding and it said treated with white vinegar so I treated it with vinegar in my little bath and when I put the soap in there it had stopped um, bleeding so that was the dyeing process now let me talk about the texture of the yarn before I dyed it. The texture of the yarn before I dyed it was like some of the softest yarn I've ever felt. I thought Red Heart yarn was soft. This yarn was beyond soft. And after the dyeing, the yarn retained the softness. The texture is the exact same. There's no difference whatsoever. And I'm really, really happy with that. Overall, I know a lot of, I've looked up when I was looking up um, dyes that I could use, um, so I didn't have to order them online. Rit got a review saying that the yarn didn't take to the dye and that it made it coarse. I didn't have any of those problems at all. The Rit, yarn, the Rit dye was wonderful um, and I highly recommend it for anyone who is out dying who wants to hand dye their own yarn without having to um, go out and buy the more expensive brands it's it does it did the same exact thing as a, a jacquard brand or a dot I don't know the name of the other brand it's like Dharma or something like that so honestly I'm going to be using the writ because it worked as an acid dye the acid was the vinegar so um after that I um, hung it on that rack right there to dry. It took um, a couple hours to dry, maybe eight hours to fully dry, and then I um, wound it on this. This is a Swift that I got from a yarn store. And then I round it, and that was that. So yeah, that was the whole entire process. Um, my review of the red dye is it gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I had no issues with it. My yarn came out gorgeous. The um, one thing that I can say is that it is a little, um, it's not as fine as the uh, Jacquard dyes are. Um, but that doesn't affect anything whatsoever and I would recommend I used a lot because at first I couldn't see the color pigment but you know <laughs> you didn't need I didn't need that much I really was going for a pink and yellow um, I like a pink like this 
in the in the yellow and I over dyed it a little too much so now that I I know that these dyes are gonna work just as fine as any other I know that I less is more so I swatched uh, the yarn so that you could see the color and how it worked up this is the crochet swatch that I did it is so cute I love the colors and how they work together I think the colors are so beautiful um, and I'm very 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 proud of this yarn it is really really pretty in person so this is the crochet swatch and then this one is the knitted swatch it's still really pretty and I crocheted this one with a 5.5 millimeter hook and this was knit on size 10 needles that I don't know what I did with I was gonna show them off here yeah size 10 and a half straight needles so guys um as many of you know, I really am going to be taking this very seriously um, by dyeing, selling, and a lot of my colorways, just to be clear, is because I, like, I'm a free crafter. I like to call myself that. I like to create things, and usually it's just one of them. One of it's always just going to be one. So I can't really say if um, all of my projects will be the same. All of my yarn. But it will still be, you know, cool to purchase and cool to have. They're so pretty. <laughs> I love it. Sorry. I'm just really, really, really in love with this. It's beautiful. I love the way the color pulls and comes through. And it looks just as good knitted as it does crochet. Looks like, it reminds me of Starburst, honestly. But yeah, here's the garter on the back. I just did plain stockinette stitch. Here's the back and then the front. So yeah, expect some hand dyed yarn coming to the crocheted corner because I had a lot of fun with this. And there's no vinegar smell whatsoever. The vinegar smell completely, completely washed out, which I'm really appreciative of. So. Guys, that ends episode 9 of our Let's Die, Let's Die, what, of the Let's Talk video where we reviewed Rit dyes. I didn't tell you the specifications of the dye, but basically if you want to use this to dye the yarn, you just literally add one cup of vinegar for natural fibers, and if you're using cotton yarn, you're going to want to do one cup of salt. Um, and then it's always good to have these because I just emptied the whole packet fit into this this little ramekin um, So it's good to have those on hand and these I you can get from Walmart I got these specifically from Hobby Lobby, but they um, come in Walmart I will be doing a review on the ones that's in the liquid form I just thought these would be a little bit more better because it says concentrated and that means there is no water to dilute it so, with that being said, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this video. I actually have to be on my way to work right now. But here I am filming a video, watching Brody sleep and feeding him Chipotle chips. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to episode 9 of our Let's Talk series and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.